What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Today's video is gonna be all about the top five programming languages to learn for 2021. So we're gonna be basing our ranking on a couple different factors. We're gonna talk about salary. We're also gonna talk about versatility, meaning how many different types of things can you build with that particular language, what kind of jobs are associated with that particular language, and so on. We're also gonna talk about how easy that language is to learn, whether you're a beginner or an experienced programmer. And we're also gonna be talking about overall demand for that position. We're gonna rank it low, medium, and high. So let's go ahead and get started. Coming in at number five, we have C Sharp. Okay, so C Sharp is a programming language developed by Microsoft that's made quite a name for itself in the web and game development industries. So if you guys are thinking about becoming a game developer, C Sharp might be the language for you to start learning, right? It's been used in some of the most popular game engine softwares like Unity, and has also been used to build the backends of huge websites like Bing and Visual Studio. Fun fact, at my startup, which is a real estate startup, we handle massive amounts of data. C Sharp is actually our primary backend development language. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna rank pretty high on our versatility list, right? We can build games or backends for websites. They mean all things database, if you guys don't know what a backend is, can be developed using C Sharp, right? So versatility is gonna come in pretty high. However, when it comes to salary, it's gonna actually be ranked our lowest on the list here. So uh, we're gonna come in at $65,000 a year for entry level positions on average. That is the lowest on our list by a pretty decent chunk, right? As you get to the mid and senior level, it climbs up to about $115,000 a year on average. And the overall average of the salaries for C Sharp developers is $102,000. So it comes in at the lowest paying position here. So um, that's where it ranks on our salary lists, guys. As far as how easy it is to start learning, it's also gonna rank um, probably one of the lowest on our list as well. Things like Python, Swift, or Kotlin, or even JavaScript are all easier to learn in my opinion, than C Sharp, especially for beginners and even experienced programmers, there is a bit of a learning curve with this language. It's not super easy to read. It's not super easy to write code in. So it's also gonna come in a little bit lower there. And overall demand, we're gonna rank at a medium, right? Because it has more versatility and the game development industry is always growing and more and more companies are digitizing their data, there is a higher need for backend engineers. However, C Sharp does have to compete with things like SQL and .NET. So that's why it's gonna come in at number five on our list. Number four, we're gonna come in with Swift. Okay, so Swift is a language developed by Apple that is used to build all things Apple. So whether you're talking iOS apps, you're talking iPad apps, TV apps, watch apps, Mac apps, Swift is gonna be the language that you're gonna to learn to build those things. As far as uh, salary goes, it's gonna rank as probably the highest on our list, right? The average starting salary for a Swift or iOS developer is gonna be $80,000 a year. As you climb to the mid and senior levels, you're going to have an average salary of $140,000 a year. That's more for the senior level positions. Mid-level positions, you're looking at about $115,000 on average but the senior positions um, are gonna pay a lot more. And the overall average per year of a Swift developer is, or iOS engineer, same thing, is gonna be $125,000 a year. So Swift ranks very high on our salary list, right? As far as how easy it is to start learning, it is going to be probably the easiest of all the five languages, maybe with the exception of Python, to start learning, especially for beginners, right? It's super easy to pick up a Mac, learn some basic Swift or go through some basic Swift tutorials and actually see real results and like actually build an iPhone app. So it's super, super easy to learn for beginners and even easier to learn for experienced programmers. Swift is actually the language that I started with and I tried learning Objective-C, which is a C-based language, and it looked like I was reading you know, some kind of Chinese, right? It was extremely difficult to understand and learn. And Swift is the successor to Objective-C and it's significantly easier to learn, it's very easy to read, and it's very easy to pick up. It also helps teach you very basic and fundamental practices of programming in one of the easiest you know, syntaxes there is to read of all programming languages. Apple is known for creating things that are easy for people to use and easy for people to understand. Swift is no different here, guys. So now let's talk about demand for Swift developers. There is a huge demand 
for iOS engineers. The US Bureau of Labor and Statistics predicts that application developer jobs, not just iOS, but overall mobile app developers, will grow 31% between 2016 and 2026, making iOS engineers a very hot commodity in 2021. Personally, guys, I have emails in my inbox every single week from recruiters trying to get me to go and work for their company. And I am a senior level iOS engineer. So jobs are extremely easy to come by in the iOS field if you gain the right experience. Now, um, so we've talked about salary, we talked about demand, how easy it is to use and versatility. The reason we're coming in at number four is because Swift is lower on the versatility list, right? It's limited to being to building iOS apps for iOS products only. Now, Apple's obviously a two trillion dollar company, so there is a lot of demand for this. But you know, you can't exactly go build a website or build a back end with Swift. OK, so that's why it's going to come in at number four. Uh, coming in at number three, we have Kotlin. So Kotlin is, you know, basically Swift's counterpart, but used to build Android apps, right? But it's a little more versatile in that you can build web applications, desktop applications, and server side or backend applications using Kotlin. So it ranks higher on the versatility list, which is why we're going to rank it above Swift. That's hard for me to do because I'm an iOS engineer, but I'm giving you guys an unbiased list here. So now let's see, uh, Kotlin was basically built to improve upon Java. So Java is to Objective-C what Swift is to Kotlin or Kotlin is to Swift, right? They're both the successors of those legacy languages and made it much easier for people to understand, people to develop in and people to read. So um, overall, Kotlin is gonna rank very high on the versatility list. It's gonna rank very high on the um, ease of use. It's, it's very easy to learn, very easy to pick up. In my opinion, not as easy as Swift, but overall, it's not a hard language for either beginners or experienced programmers to learn. And it's gonna also rank as high on our demand list. There is a huge demand for Kotlin developers. And because we have that increased versatility, it's not just gonna be used to build Android apps, but it's also used to build a bunch of other things. And overall, last time I checked, there are a lot more Androids in use in the world than there are iPhone apps. Hence, making the, develop, the, the need for Kotlin engineers higher, right? So the salary is going to be very, very similar to what we saw with the iOS positions. Um, the entry level is going to be about 80K. The mid to senior level is going to be about 140K on average. And the overall average is going to come in at $127,000 a year. So uh, based on my research, and I've done research on Glassdoor, ZipRecruiter, Payscale, Salaries.com, all that stuff to get all of this data, uh, Kotlin developers do make a little more on average than iOS developers. Again, that's because of the higher demand for them. Okay, coming in at number two, we are gonna have JavaScript, okay? So JavaScript is used to build 95% of web application. So it's no surprise that this programming language has become one of the most in-demand skills for companies. According to HackerRank, which is a reputable programming website, it is the most popular language hiring managers look for, look for in candidates globally. So this is not just in the US, this is globally overall. So that's why we're gonna get um, Swift, or sorry, not Swift, JavaScript up very high on our demand um, ranking, right? So there's a huge demand for JavaScript engineers. So that's why JavaScript is going to rank higher on our list here. Um, as far as salary, it's not as high for the entry level position. It's going to be about $72,000 a year for entry level engineers. It's going to climb to about $135,000 for mid to senior level engineers on average. And the overall average is going to come in at 116 k So the salary is a little lower here, guys, but because of the demand and the versatility that JavaScript has, we're going to rank it at number two on our list, right? The demand really takes the cake here for this one because like I said, it's used to build 95% of web applications, right? Um, when you have mobile develop, um, mobile platforms, you can only have something developed in either Swift or Kotlin or a hybrid of the two, which is something like Flutter. And um, JavaScript also has a ton of different frameworks, like you have Angular, you have React, all of those things are written in JavaScript. A lot of server side code is written in JavaScript. So the versatility and the demand are what really are what are really gonna bring this guy up to that number two spot. It's also very easy to learn. 
and very easy for beginners and experienced programmers to pick up, right? Very readable syntax, very easy to write code. And overall, I do think Swift and Kotlin and even Python are easier to read and easier to learn there, but um, that's why we're gonna rank uh, JavaScript at number two. The demand and the versatility really take the cake there. So coming in at number one, we have Python, right? Python is going to be listed as the number one top programming language to learn on almost any article that you read. It's super in demand, it's super versatile, and it's super easy to learn. And the salaries are also pretty awesome, right? So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about what Python is before we get into our ranking system. So it's used to develop websites, web applications, graphical user interfaces or GUIs, network servers, backend, NPA, backend APIs, desktop apps, medial tools. It has machine learning and data science capability as well. So Python, Python is going to rank by far the highest on our versatility list, right? Python developers can do anything from backend development to user interface development, to machine learning, to data science, to whatever the hell you wanna use Python to do. It can do almost anything, right? So. Uh, it's used by some of the world's largest and most successful companies. That's, this includes Fang, you know, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and you know, even NASA uses Python to develop, you know, sort of like things with data science applications and machine learning. So, like I said, in terms of versatility uh, and demand, Python is going to be by far the highest, right? According to Stack Overflow surveys, it's one of the most in-demand languages for 2021. Uh, it's also a great choice for beginner programmers because of its simple libraries and flexible syntax. What does that mean? It just means that it's easy for you to read and understand the code that you're using. And they also have a lot of open source libraries that have a lot of built-in functionality for beginner developers. As far as uh, experienced programmers, it's even easier for you to come in and learn Python. If you know any programming language, Python is gonna be a piece of cake for you to pick up. So now let's talk salary before we uh, start to get to the end of this video. Uh, $80,000 a year for entry level. Then we're gonna come in at about 130K a year for uh, mid to senior level. And then the overall average is gonna be about 117K. So it is not as high as you know some of the mobile development positions. Those do seem to be the highest on average paying positions out there. I can confirm that with the salary that I make. I'll tell you guys how much I make in another video. But overall, because the demand for mobile developers is so high and the overall supply of them is so low, it just naturally makes it so that the positions pay more money, right? There's a much higher overall amount of Python developers and JavaScript developers and things like that. There is a much lower amount of mobile developers. And this is mainly because Python and stuff, that's, that's like taught in a lot of uh, boot camps, a lot of, uh, what's it called, college curriculums, high schools even do it. Whereas mobile development is going to be a lot more rare for you to find um, really like established curriculums or, or boot camps for, right? It's much more Python oriented or web stuff like JavaScript that you're gonna find um, with you know the available teaching material that's out there or how easy it is for you to learn those things. It's a little harder for you to pick up mobile development because of the lack of resources out there, which is typically why those positions pay a little bit more. It's simple, supply and demand. High demand, low supply, you get paid more money, right? Because the thing that is being supplied automatically becomes worth more because there is not as much of it available. So um, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So once again, the ranking was Python, Kotlin, or Python, JavaScript, Kotlin, Swift, C Sharp, right? Those are my top five programming languages for you guys to learn. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I hope this guy, I hope this video helps you guys uh, determine what kind of language or, or programming language you wanna start picking up for 2021 so that hopefully you guys can get a job doing this stuff because during COVID, software engineering is thriving. All right, guys, so thanks for watching this video. More to come to the channel soon. We'll see you there. Peace out.